Michelle, what are some of the signs producers should be looking for with heat stress in cattle? Yeah, so with heat stress in cattle, you'll typically see animals uh, increase their respiration rates. They'll start breathing much faster. You'll also see in severe cases, they'll do what we call panting, um, where that, that can increase in severity. So animals will actually be uh, breathing in a labored fashion with open mouths, a lot of drooling. Sometimes their necks are extended erectly. And so uh, th those are clear signs that animals are, are really starting to have to cool themselves off uh, physiologically and are trying to regulate their body temperature and, and adapt to the environment, um, especially in situations where they can't cool themselves off with shade or water. You can also look and see if animals are eating because if they are really heat stressed, um, eating produces heat within the animal. So you'll tend to see that they back off and actually may not be consuming their feed. Is there anything that, 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 that cattle producers can do to help the, the, the cattle in the fields? Absolutely. There's lots of things cattle producers can do. Um, and what we see here behind us is a great indicator of one of these strategies is providing animal shade. Mm -hmm. um, by providing them shade, you're taking them away from the, uh, from the solar rays, which uh, put heat onto the animal and which they have to cope with. So giving them shade is important and it's got a lot of benefits. You just have to make sure that the structure itself is big enough to provide all the animals enough, uh, enough square footage. They recommend 20 to 40 square feet per animal of shade. And you also want to make these structures tall enough, somewhere uh, taller than eight feet in general, uh, so that you don't impede airflow because airflow is another important component to helping animals cope with heat stress. Uh, and allowing for them to have air pass over their bodies helps, helps with the cooling mechanism and how they release heat. So giving them shade and not, not impeding on the airflow or ventilation of their environment is important. Another major and important strategy is providing them adequate clean water. And so during hot summer days, that, that water requirement is going to be elevated, so they're going to want to drink more. More. you got to make sure that you provide them that extra amount of, of water that's needed. And by cleaning it on a weekly basis, you'll continue to encourage them to drink more water because just like us, they like clean water too. Okay, it, it, does the hide color play any role into temperature sure. retention? Sure, sure. When we talk about different uh, factors that can uh, put an animals at more risk mm -hmm. with heat stress, color is definitely um, uh, one of those factors. Uh, black hided animals just have to deal with more, it, they absorb more of that solar radiation. Um, animals that are sick and have chronic respiratory issues are also going to be at higher risk because just like we talked about before, uh, respiration is one of the primary mechanisms that these animals use to cool themselves off. So if they're sick and they've got uh, complications with their respiratory system, then they're not going to be able to, to exhale a lot of that heat as effectively as normal healthy animals would. And also animals that are uh, have more fat on them, mm -hmm. they also have a, a much more difficult time releasing that heat through their skin. So lots of different factors play a role and like you said, black hides is definitely um, is one of those factors that can make it more difficult for an animal to cope with the heat. Okay, and, and then we got to get out there and we got to work with them, we got to feed them and all that. Is there a better time to work with them? Absolutely. Working animals and getting them out of their home pens or home pastures and, pu and putting them through um, through a walk or through a distance or a hike, you know, to a working facility, it stresses them out. And, and just that alone can elevate their temperatures one to three degrees, which is a lot. Um, and so if you absolutely have to work the animals, it's recommended that they get worked as early in the day as possible. And that if you do have to put them into working facilities or holding facilities that you keep that time that they're in there to a maximum of about 30 minutes and just really minimize the stress that those animals have to endure because they're already stressed from the heat they're going to have to deal with later on in the day. Are, are, are there tools out there to help cattle producers manage this? Yes, there's actually lots of wonderful tools today. Mm -hmm. um, in just the past three or four years, there's been lots of neat things that are out there for producers to find, um, especially pertaining to heat stress. And so um, you can, uh, producers can easily find uh, local weather forecasts on the radio, the television, on the internet um, to their particular location so they can find uh, forecasts as to what the week's weather is like, what the day's weather is going to be, so they can go ahead and start thinking ahead and setting up shade structures or, or bringing in extra water if needed. Um, and a lot of these sites also are now uh, providing uh, heat stress indexes or cattle comfort advisors, which is really neat because these measures and these models take in all of these different weather information that is out there for producers uh, to, to receive and they kind of plug it all into a model and they, they essentially give you a number, you the producer a number, and that number essentially estimates 
what the comfort level of that animal is given all these different complex things like wind speed and temperature and humidity and even the solar radiation. Um, so these models are becoming much more complex in understanding that weather and the environment is very different from one location to the next and they're trying to give us more accurate understanding of what the animal's feeling like. That way producers can instantly and quickly uh, start taking the appropriate steps to making sure their animals have all the tools they need to overcome those really hot temperatures. And you can even find really neat apps that help uh, producers um, uh, figure out some strategies on, on preventing heat stress. So there's an app for everything and now we've got apps for heat stress mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. There's a, a, an app called Thermal Aid that was produced uh, and generated by researchers at University of Missouri. And this app actually helps producers measure respiration rates and it also helps the producers to plug in their local temperature and humidity information so that they can collectively look at what the estimate of the cattle comfort is um, and they can and they can use that uh, to, to start taking the proper uh, strategies and steps to helping their animals and here in the state of Oklahoma we've got the wonderful Mesonet um, that now provides a cattle comfort advisor and so these are numbers that producers can instantly get on the internet and they can look in their particular local uh, region and their counties and see what the numbers look like for their particular animals and again take the appropriate steps to stay in the comfortable range right. um, for, for heat stress. Okay, thank you much, Michelle you. Calvo Lorenzo. And we'll put a link to that on our website, sunup.okstate.edu.